Good morning, everyone. I'm Amber Pierce, and I'm here to give you a little commentary from the couch on this year's Zero Rosa. So let's get started. Stage one sounds like it was a pretty flat stage, um, and it sounds like the, the course actually took a turn inland to get a little bit of elevation gain for the GPM sprint, which apparently was pretty flat, and a lot of the athletes were really surprised to see the 1K to go for the GPM sign because they hadn't really been climbing much. Uh, the organizers do this, however, because they wanted to get that climbing competition going and they want somebody to get the point so that they can be in the jersey on the podium afterwards. So that got going today with Valentina Scandalara taking the GPM points and she'll be wearing that jersey tomorrow. Um, also within the stage were two intermediate sprints with time bonuses, a few seconds each, and that was Voss who went after both of those knowing that, that time bonus would give her um, a time advantage in the GC classification given that this is a flat stage likely going to finish in a bunch sprint and whenever you have a bunch sprint and you have most of the peloton finishing together as a group everybody gets the same time so anybody within that group who has some time bonus uh, would have an advantage in the GC and given that today is the first stage of the race that would also mean a higher likelihood of being in the pink jersey and in fact, that's exactly what happened. Uh, the stage came down to a bunch sprint, and thanks to the time bonus that Voss collected in these two sprints, uh, she ended up in the pink jersey. Um, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, after the GPM, the race turned back towards the coast. It sounded like it was a very wide open road with a huge headwind, which of course was discouraging um, in terms of people wanting to go for breaks. And there are a few things going on here. First of all, it's the first stage of a very, very big tour. And all of these teams are going to be looking to conserve as much energy as possible. For the GC riders especially, this is a day to tuck in, eat, drink, do as little work as possible, and really conserve their energy for those later stages where they're going to have to be fighting it out in the mountains and have um, enough energy left over to produce a good time trial. So there's a lot of work ahead for those GC riders, and today was a day for them to sit in and conserve. Uh, likewise, actually, for the teams, though, um, those, those riders who aren't GC contenders are actually going to be doing a lot of work in support of their, of their team leaders later in the week. So they're also going to want to be uh, conserving energy today. Mainly, the, the, main, the main goal is you don't want to burn a lot of matches. And given that this is the first stage of the tour, the pink jersey is up for grabs, uh, a stage win is up for grabs, it's a flat stage, everybody's relatively fresh. Really, it's anybody's, it's anybody's stage to win. Um, you're also not going to, as a team, you're also not going to want to let a break go up the road because all of a sudden, you know, you're diminishing um, the, the chances for a stage win, especially, I mean, if you miss the break, obviously, you're diminishing the chances for a stage win and giving up the chance for the pink jersey. But you also don't want to necessarily let a break go up the road because that gives a small group of riders a time advantage, which at this early stage of the game, you're never really sure how that's going to play out later on in the race. So I think for everybody involved, it was the goal was you know set up the sprinters on the team, uh, control the race, make sure you know nobody ends up with some you know random group up the road with a ton of time that maybe you end up having to invest some some matches in later in the race to to bring back. It's just more of a sure thing when. You're, you're coming at the race with everybody coming into the finish at the, at the same time on that first stage. So not a lot of incentive for racers to be aggressive and go up the road. Not a lot of incentive for teams to try to get a break going and send somebody up the road. Um, the, the name of the game in today's, or in yesterday's stage, excuse me, the name of the game in this first stage was um, conserve, 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 conserve. This is a huge race. It's going to have huge uh, physiological demands on all the riders, whether they're a GC rider or they're a support rider. So um, it's it's all hands on deck for this, this stage race, which means that everybody needs to uh, save their energy and really put it on the line when it counts. And um, for sprinters today, that was huge. They all had an opportunity for a, not only a stage win, but the pink jersey, which of course made for a very nervous and chaotic finish. Uh, sounded like in the last two circuits there were many crashes and uh, a lot of chaos. It was extremely difficult for teams to control the race. A lot of times when you see a flat stage like this, especially like we saw in the Tour de France a couple days ago for the men, uh, you see teams coming to the front and setting up 
really fast, strong leadouts in order to, um, first of all, to set up their, their sprinters. But the other thing that this does is it makes it really safe. When you increase the speed and the peloton strings out behind you, um, it's just less chaotic and there, there's less chance of, of crashing. And so that's one of the reasons for doing a lead, uh, a lead out. And in this case, the course apparently wasn't very technical and there were the nature of the course made it extremely difficult for any one team to control. But you add to that, that in the women's racing, we only have six riders on a team. Um, in the Tour de France, you see they've got nine. And those extra three riders actually make a really, really big difference in terms of your ability uh, to control a race coming into the finish. Um, typically in a lead out, each rider participating in the lead out would do somewhere around 500 meters of a maximal effort. Um, and so what you do is you have the whole team on the front, one, one person in front of the other. The person on the very front does a full on all out effort for about 500 meters until they're just done and they pull off. And then the next person does like pours everything that they have left into that 500 meters and they pull off. And so you give, you think about that. If you have three extra riders, that's an extra K and a half that you can potentially control the race. Um, and for the women, it's not only an extra K and a half, but I mean, those are three more riders that you have, um, and, and that much more energy that you have later in the race to, to work for your team leader, to go for a stage win. Um, and again, this is the first stage of the race. The teams don't want to be burning all their matches right now. Um, so with the smaller teams and given the nature of the course, it was, it sounded like it was extremely difficult for anybody to control the race with a lead out and so it sounded like it was just a series of swarms it was sort of everybody for themselves and um the rider obviously who came out on top of that was uh kirsten veald and she managed to find her way through all of that chaos and she won the sprint over voss who came in second but as we know voss took those intermediate sprints and the time bonus and she therefore had a time advantage over veald so veald took the stage Voss was in the pink jersey, and of course we had Valentina Scandalara who took the GPM. So um, it was an interesting first day, chaotic, and of course part of that chaos is all the riders are fresh. Um, they're all nervous and excited and ready to race, and that makes for a very chaotic environment. So um, definitely had a couple crashes in there, and we wish those riders well, and um, hopefully we won't see too much more of that. But of course, after the first stage, um, you, you just you get those jitters out, and then everybody gets back into the rhythm of racing, and it should be pretty exciting coming up here um, as we get into some of the more difficult stages and we watch uh, the drama of the general classification classification play out. Um, so a lot of the GC riders that were tucked in and hiding from the wind today, uh, they'll be coming out to play later this week, and I'll be here to give you some more insights and commentary on what's going on. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post them. Um, if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to cover, I can try to do that as well. So with that, um, that's a wrap for the first stage and uh, I'll be back with more pretty soon. All right.